Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled, my name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing a full playthrough of Townsfolk Tussle. Townsfolk Tussle takes place over four rounds, each with a separate boss battle. Each round is broken into two phases, the Towns phase, where players will buy gear and experience events, and the Fight phase, where you will, surprise surprise, fight. To set up a game of Townsfolk Tussle, place the main board in the center of the table. Place the sideboard on the market side. Shuffle up the ruffian tokens and randomly select four, placing them in the lower left-hand corner of the main board. Then select your townsfolk. For each character, find their starting gear cards. Place your starting gear in the appropriate slot on the side of their character board. Norman Fishboy has a two-handed weapon, so I like to place it between the left and right hand slot. Then, set their starting health, movement, moxie, and accuracy levels. Use a red marker to show current maximum health. The rulebook suggests using three townsfolk when playing with the solo variant. You can also have each player control two townsfolk when playing two-player. Place the turn order markers in the order of your choice on the turn order track. Each player also starts with 10 coins. Now shuffle up the town event, feats of metal, and peddler gear decks. Place them near the main board along with the dice and money. And now you're ready to begin. First thing you do during the town phase is draw back up to three feats of metal cards. For the first round, we'll just draw three. We go in buying order, so it looks like Norman Fishboy is going to be the first to get a town event. Okay, this has a red border on the top, so this is a secret event. When playing the solo variant, you remove secret events from the event deck. But uh, I'm sort of simulating a two-player game here, so I'll just keep it. Secret. Coward's Maneuver. Fighting has really brought out your cowardly side. Who cares about the others? You just want to live. And it says, keep this card face down in front of you. The next time you would be knocked out from damage, reveal this card. Choose another townsfolk, swap places with them on the board. They take the damage instead. And then discard once activated. <laughs> so the Norman player keeps that face down and the Hinlo player has no idea what that card says or does. Hinlo just drew bottom shelf goods. The peddler decides to offer a discount on her selection of refurbished goods. Keep this card in front of the townsfolk for the rest of the game. Whenever a townsfolk purchases a piece of gear from one of the bottom two slots of the peddler's shop, they receive a two coin discount, but must roll immediately. On a two or less, the gear breaks instantly and must be discarded. Well, we will keep that near the peddler's area to remind us of that effect. Uh, yeah, apparently for the rest of the game. Lastly, deal out 10 pieces of gear from the peddler's deck into the market. In buying order, players may buy or sell one piece of gear, going around and around until everyone decides to pass. You sell gear for half the cost, and you cannot sell your starting gear. Also, before buying anything, players can collectively spend two coins to completely reset the market, but just once per town phase. We each start with 10 coins. And I think Norman immediately has his eyes on this pitch spork because it is a lot like his starting weapon, except it's more accurate and it does more damage. It will cost him all of his money, but I think he will take this one. Although the spiked vest is really interesting. I'm just not sure it's a good idea to risk that roll and <laughs> possibly come up completely empty handed. I think Hinlo is most interested in those melodic maracas. Her accuracy starts at negative one, which means she's going to struggle to attack and hit but those maracas will give her a plus one to accuracy and give other townsfolk within three squares a plus one to accuracy as well. 
And then we just move her accuracy marker up from negative one to zero. And also it's, it's a one-handed instrument. So because she has a one-handed weapon, she can hold both of those things at the same time. And there we go, we are done buying. Everything gets discarded and we can move on to the fight phase. To do that, we flip the sideboard and we flip over the token to see which ruffian we're gonna be facing first. This is, our, this is our first fight, so it's at the chump level and looks like it's Deputy Wagums. Here he is, Deputy Wagums. And let's read the little story about him. The old sheriff took a liking to Wagums. The little pup was as loyal as he was dopey. It was the perfect mix that qualified him as his right-hand man. While the sheriff w could always rely on Wagums to do the job, he was never sure how well he'd do it. You see, Wagums never played dumb. He was dumb, and he loved to play. Without the sheriff's supervision, Wagums has made some new friends in town. The townsfolk have warned him to stay away from these woofians, but they're just as playful and rowdy as he is. They even gave him these toy guns to play with, although they seem to have a mind of their own. As you can see on the board, it shows their movement and health based on how many players are in the game. Since this is a two-player game, Wagums will have six movement and 12 health, which you mark at the bottom right-hand corner of the sideboard. You then flip the card over and it shows exactly how to set up the map. If this was our fourth and final boss fight, we would use the setup instructions below, but this is our first fight, so we ignore all that and we just place the terrain as shown on the map. Once you've placed all the terrain according to the instructions on the back of the character board, you then want to take the corresponding terrain cards and place them at the bottom. These cards show the special ability of each piece of terrain. There's two types of terrains. There's features and there's obstacles. Features you often have to move into in order to activate some special ability. Obstacles block your movement and line of sight and you need to be adjacent to them in order to interact with them. I will show all of that once we start playing. Also get their deck of 15 action cards. Shuffle it up and put it on the board. Each of the bosses will have a different special ability depending if it's the first, second, third, or final boss that you're fighting. Since Deputy Wagums is the first boss, the chump boss, then as it shows on the board, they will be a playful pup and have nothing special, no special abilities. However, if this was the second fight that we were having, then they would be at the hooligan level and Deputy Wagums would have the Soil Slinger ability, which says if Wagums ends an action inside a terrain piece, all town folk within two squares of that terrain piece take one damage. Luckily, we won't have to deal with that for this fight. Also down here, Wagums has a weakness. It says, malfunctioning revolver. Whenever Wagums takes an action, if a townsfolk does not take damage by the end of the action, Wagums takes one damage. This triggers after ruffian abilities trigger. That's something we'll need to keep in mind. If he doesn't damage us, then he takes damage. Also down here are the ruffian gear rewards. After we defeat Wagums, we will gain one of these three special gear cards at random for future fights. Here we have Frantic Eyes, The Sure Shooter, and Distracting Tail. Lastly, let's take a quick look at each character's feats of metal cards. Hinlo has Picky Patron. If the peddler's shop is reset, achieve this feat. Well, <laughs> we should have looked at that earlier. Masochist. 
Take damage from a terrain piece, willingly or unwillingly. If you achieve this, you gain four coins or have plus one moxie for the rest of the fight. That could be useful, but I'm, I'm not even sure if any of these terrain pieces can harm us. And lastly, safety first. Be the only townsfolk at max HP during a fight. Let's see what Norman Fishboy has going on. Survivor. Take two plus damage in a single turn without being knocked out. Okay, that seems doable. Careful planning. Complete a fight without changing your equipped gear. Well, that will be very easy to do. And fight fixated. Purchase no gear from the peddler in this town phase. <laughs> okay, well, maybe next round. During the fight phase, we use the beaten order from top to bottom. As you can see, the ruffian is always first. On the ruffian's turn, you draw the top card from their deck and resolve it from top to bottom. It says, Hefty bullet. One of Wagam's revolvers spews out an absurdly large bullet. Duck for cover! So the target is the farthest townsfolk. Hinslow is the furthest townsfolk away, so she is going to be the target. And it says ranged attack. If the target is within eight squares, they are walloped by the bulky bullet, taking two damage. The damage is reduced by one if the target is standing inside of a terrain piece. Then move wagons towards the target. Hinlow is the furthest townsfolk away, so she is going to be the target. Right off the bat, Hinlow is taking two damage. She is near death already. Wow, that could not have gone worse. Now Wagums moves towards her. He has six movement, which is more than enough. One. And now he is going to push Norman away, and the player gets to decide which way to be pushed. Here or here. I think he'll go on this side. So that will be two, three, four. Done. Hinlo has a melee weapon, which means she needs to be adjacent in order to hit. It costs one moxie, and she has two moxie per turn, and it inflicts one damage. She also has a few special abilities. Pinch Provisions costs two moxie and restores one hit point to an adjacent townsfolk. That doesn't help because right now she is the one who needs healing. She also has Headless Chicken. The first time you would be knocked out per fight, you survive with 1 HP and place yourself adjacent to another townsfolk. She also has Farmer's Overalls, which lets her add one to her terrain rolls and an additional plus one to rolls in the Overgrown Cornfield and Heidi Haystack. Well, we have the Overgrown Cornfield right here and the Heidi Haystack up there. On your turn, you can do a bunch of actions in any order. You can move orthogonally, never diagonally, uh, up to your movement level. And you can split that up, interrupting your movement in order to take other actions. You can also interact with the terrain, and these cards explain exactly what happens. For these features, you must be standing inside the terrain, and for obstacles, you must be adjacent. You can also activate abilities on your turn, you are allowed to switch gear, and then, of course, you can attack. Hinlo is going to attack first, since she is standing right next to Wagams. She must spend one of her two moxie to use the wheat sickle. And because the accuracy is five plus and her accuracy meter is on zero, she must roll at least a five. Uh, nope, <laughs> we rolled a three, so we missed. We have one more moxie left, but each weapon can only be used once per turn, unless stated otherwise. So Hinlo cannot attack again. Instead, she will use her five movement to run away into the cornfield. You, you're allowed to pass through other townsfolk. And I think that's going to be her entire turn. The overgrown cornfield will affect her at the beginning of her next turn. 
Now it's Norman Fishboy's turn. He has a couple of really cool special abilities. His Pitch Spork is a range 2 melee weapon, but he also has lengthy limbs, which means he gains plus 2 range on all melee weapons. So he can attack at range 4. And if he hits, he has the ability of Strange Attraction, which lets him pull the ruffian up to two spaces towards him. So maybe if he goes two, three, four. Now he is three spaces away from Henlo and her melodic maraca. So he is getting plus one on accuracy and he is already at plus two accuracy. So plus three total. <laughs> and he rolled a two. Wow, the maraca helped. Keep in mind, a one is always a miss, regardless of your stats. So he does two damage to Wagums. And Norman could pull him two spaces closer if he wanted to, but I don't think I don't think he does. So we're back to Wagum's turn. Spinning revolvers. Wagums rolls around in the dirt while his revolvers shoot off wildly. The target. All a townsfolk within six squares. They are both within six squares, so this will target both of them. Divide two damage between all targets. Players may choose. Well, this is an obvious choice. Norman will take both damage, and boom, he has completed the survivor feat. Take two damage on a single turn without being knocked out. We will, we will deal with that in a second. Move Wagums completely into the closest terrain feature. It looks like it's tied each or three spaces away. So we get to decide. And I think I want Wagums to move into the cornfield. Just like that. Then, if there are four plus town folks on the board, trigger the after effect. Well, there's not four, there's only two of us, so we don't have to trigger the after effect. Now, as a reward, Norman can either take two coins or plus one moxie for the rest of this fight. Having three moxie doesn't really help Norman, so I think he'll take the coins. Now it's Henlo's turn, and she is in the overgrown cornfield. It says if a townsfolk begins their turn inside the cornfield, they must roll. And she's going to get a plus two on that because of her farmer's overalls. Six plus two equals eight. That's the middle result. You can see a way out of the corn stalks. Your turn continues as normal. Oh, that's a shame. With a 10 plus, she could have found the top card from the peddler deck. So close. Well, I think she is going to take another swing at the doggy. And that's a miss. Rolling terribly, rolling terribly. Run away! One, two, three, four, five. Into the vegetable patch. And it says, once per fight, each townsfolk may in their turn inside the vegetable patch and restore one HP. Mmm, yes please. I think Norman's gonna do something very similar. One, two... Three. Uh, nope, he, he's gonna stay here because he has a range of four. And again, plus three to accuracy, so anything but a one. Success. That's two more damage. And he will also use the vegetable patch to heal. And now that we ate all the vegetables, uh, I'll just flip this over as a reminder, we can't use it again. Dancing with friends. Wagums thinks you're dancing with him, but you're just dodging bullets. Target. All townsfolk within six squares. Okay, both of them again. Okay, it says keep those feet moving or else you'll lose them. All targets are going to make a roll and then add their movement. Okay, let's start with Hinlo. She has five movement. Plus three equals eight. Ouch, right through the kidney. Take one damage. Okay, 
Well, good thing we stopped and had a few vegetables before getting shot. Norman only has four movement. But plus nine equals 13. And that's the best result. You manage to dodge the shots. You may immediately move up to two squares. Uh, let's definitely do that. Then Wagams moves towards the furthest townsfolk. They are equal, so I think he will go right here. We could go over to this mushroom grove to get some more healing, but it is a bit of a risk. First, let's take another swing with the Wheatsicle. Four plus zero is not going to do it. I've missed three times in a row. <laughs> Hinlow is basically useless, so I think we're going to go hide in the haystack just to try to avoid dying. The fence is an obstacle. I could try to jump over it, but I think I'll just go around and hop into the haystack next turn. I think Norman is going to go next to the wishing well. We are still at ranged four, but we are not going to get the bonus. Nine, no problem. Two more damage. And because Wagam's health moved on or past this red number, that triggers the ruffian's breaking point. That means Norman's turn ends immediately, and the ruffian gets a bonus turn right away. Dig up. Wagam's digs up an old toy. Target. All townsfolk within five squares of the vegetable patch. Once again, they are both going to be targeted by Wagams. Attempt to completely move into the vegetable patch. If Wagams enters the vegetable patch, even partially, trigger the after effect. Well, he is already in there, so... After effect. All targets are pelted with dirt and take one damage. The target closest to Wagams is smacked by something hard. They receive the first accessory from the peddler deck. They may equip it immediately. They are tied again. They both take one damage. Hinlo would be knocked out, but because of her headless chicken ability, the first time this happens, she survives with one hit point. And then Norman also takes a hit. And I guess we will give him the item. Oh, a dog leash. Melee. One-handed, whip, only does one damage, but at range three. And on a critical hit, the ruffian loses one movement. Well, I don't think we're going to equip that. Now, all of that was just Wagam's breaking point action. So now we continue in turn order, and it is their turn again. So Wagam's gets to take two turns in a row, which is really bad for us. What's that smell? The landscape is littered with little surprises from Wagams. Target. All townsfolk inside a terrain piece. Attempt to move completely into the closest terrain feature. Each target looks down and finds themselves knee-deep in a heaping pile of doggy droppings. They take one damage and must unequip any equipped leg gear. Any target that did not have leg gear equipped loses one movement. Luckily, neither of us were targeted by that, so nobody takes damage, and because of Wagam's weakness, he takes a damage instead. He's now down to five hit points. Hinlo is about to die, so she is going to hide in this haystack. I have plus two, but didn't need it. Only needed a five. That cost one moxie, and I did need to move into the haystack. Sorry about that. It says... You're nearly invisible. Remove yourself from the board. Return to the board on a square next to Heidi Haystack at the start of your next turn. If the Heidi Haystack is removed from the board for any reason while you're hiding, you are knocked out. So there's a bit of danger there, but at least I should be safe from the next attack. Norman is going to use their starting headgear card, the Fishy Cap. For two Moxie, they can sling a fish at a ruffian within four squares for two damage. You must be adjacent to the Town Pond, Murky Moat, or the Wishing Well. Usable once per fight. 
We are definitely within four spaces of Wagams, and we are adjacent to the Wishing Well. Actually, before we do that, let's see what the Wishing Well does. You can pay two coins and make a wish. Well, look at that. We happen to have two coins because of the survivor feat. I, why not? Let's do it. We will pay those two coins and make a wish. Oh no, we rolled a two. Nothing happens. Ah, if we, if we had rolled a four, we could have healed a hit point, And if we got an eight plus, we could have scored another random gear card. That is a shame. Our rolling has been awful today. Anyway, we, we're going to use the fishy cap. It costs two moxie, uh, does two damage, and we've passed another breaking point. So Norman's turn ends immediately, and Wagam gets to go. Sad howl. Wagam squeaks out a pathetic howl. Now isn't the time for empathy. Target none. Wagam's sorrowful howl coaxes the team out from hiding. All townsfolk that are inside a terrain piece are moved four squares towards Wiggums. Sorry, Wagums. Then play the next card in the action deck. Technically, we are not inside a terrain piece. We are off the board, so that doesn't affect anybody. But we do need to play the next card. Gallivant. Wagums frolics across the landscape without a care in the world. Target, none. Turn towards the closest townsfolk and move forward. Any townsfolk that collides with Wagams during this action takes one damage. If Wagams ends his movement inside of a terrain piece, trigger the after effect. Luckily, that won't happen. We'll just have him go up this way, like that. All of that was just Wagams' breaking point turn. Now for his actual turn. Puppy Eyes. A townsfolk falls victim to Wagam's lovable stare. How can you hurt this poor creature? Target. Closest townsfolk. Attempt to move completely into the vegetable patch. Okay, we can do that. The target begins to feel uncomfortable beating down this poor misguided pup. They must choose one. Either take pity... Unequipped a weapon of your choice, it cannot be equipped for the remainder of the fight, or feel remorse. Keep this card in front of the target whenever you deal damage to Wagams, lower your ACC, your accuracy, by one, or unequipped a weapon of your choice. Now, I'm just realizing during the last action round, Wagams failed to cause damage, so he should take a damage because of his weakness. And he's not going to do damage again this round because of his puppy eyes. Norman is going to keep that card. He isn't going to unequip anything yet. And Wagums takes another damage. It's Henlo's turn. She has to reappear on the board adjacent to the Heidi Haystack. She'll go right here. And she'll just run in screaming. I'm going to get at least one hit with this blasted wheatsicle. Hey, she rolled the five that she needed, and she gets the killing blow. <laughs> I'm a hero! Once the ruffian's health goes to zero, the round ends immediately. Okay, the first thing you do when you defeat a ruffian is each player can decide to discard some of the feats of metal that, you know, they don't want to carry into the next round. So, you know, Hinlo might decide to discard this masochist and maybe keep the other two. Remember, at the start of the town phase, you're going to draw back up to three, so you can discard as many as you want. Then each player receives six coins. Then the townsfolk that completed the most feats of metal and did not get knocked out. So if you get knocked out, you're not eligible, but for everyone who didn't get knocked out, whoever completed the most of these feats of metal will get to loot the <laughs> corpse of the ruffian. Which means they'll basically get to uh, grab one of these three pieces of ruffian gear. Now you receive it at random, so you just shuffle it up. 
And in this case, Norman was the winner and gets the distracting tail, <laughs> which says, for zero moxie, you may move the ruffian up to two squares. Wow, that's pretty cool. You then restore all of your stats back to original. The only stats that remain are from your gear. So in fact, Enlo would be back up to there. You then rotate the townsfolk on this order track and you return to town and repeat the town phase over again. After completing the town phase again, you would flip the next ruffian and fight them, this time on the hooligan strength. Then you'd have the next one on the troublemaker, and then you would have your final fight. Of course, the final fight uses the final fight rules that you can find on the back, and these are much more complicated and have many more additional rules. But there you go. That was one of the fights from Townsfolk Tussle. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.